The following is intended for mature audiences only. Discretion is advised. Pillow fight, pillow fight. This is so fun. Oh, pillow fighting. Why is this so fun? Pillow fight. Hi everyone, it's me, Yamini. If you like Pillow Fight, please be sure to give it a follow. And if you listen on Apple Podcasts, rate and review it. That would mean the world to me. Enjoy the episode and thank you so much for listening to Pillow Fight. If you're following me on literally any platform, you probably know just how much I poop. And let me tell you, wiping your butt raw with toilet paper does not remove all the shit that's sitting on it. Thankfully, there's now a sleek bidet attachment that clips onto your existing toilet and sprays your butt completely clean with fresh water. It's called Tushy and it's the best thing you can do for your butt. Tushy sprays directly to your ass and removes the poop completely so you aren't sitting on bacteria that leads to nasty things like hemorrhoids, yeast infections, UTIs, and itchy assholes. And a Tushy bidet cuts toilet paper use by 80% so it pays for itself in just a few months. Join millions of happy Hello Tushy customers, including me, right now and have a clean butt with every flush. Go to hellotushy.com slash yams to get 10% off your order. That's hellotushy.com slash Y-A-M-Z. Hello fight. Pillow fight, pillow fight. Is yours made of goose? Ooh, we got feathers flying everywhere. Mine's made of goose. Pillow fight, pillow fight. This is so fun. Pillow fighting. Why is this so fun? Pillow fight. Today on Pillow Fight, I'm joined by Isabella Zanobini, one of my best friends and an artist and comedian who I've had the lovely pleasure of writing, performing, and living with. If you listened to last week's episode, you'll know that Isabella is the famed creator of the Scientology drinking game that we played in college. You can keep up with her brilliant mind on Twitter, at Barada Babe, where she just released a list of her favorite cheeses. On this episode of Pillow Fight, we talk 2010s culture, questionable fashion choices, and the Sims woohooing. Mary? Kill. Fuck, Mary, kill. Okay, okay, so for Fuck, Mary, kill, I picked three entry level scams that any, any normal Amazing. person out there can do. Okay? Number one, <laughs> you can technically scam a ton of free core power classes by signing up for free weeks, like every time with a new email and then going to a different studio or like, you know, just putting your hair on a different way. And, you know, they don't recognize you. Maybe there's a different instructor teaching the class. So, you know, I think in my lifetime, I've had maybe five or six free weeks at core power. The second one is that there's a lot of girls out there, boys too, non-binary people, all sorts of people out there in the world selling clothes that they bought from Target in 2008 on Depop uh, for absurd prices and then claiming those things are vintage. So, you know, they get they get that profit. And then number three, which is a cut that you probably don't know about this. Um, I've recently figured <laughs> this out. So a lot of companies will let anyone with like any social media account be an ambassador for their company. And so they'll Ooh. give you like a pretty big discount in exchange for like marketing their products. Whoa. But when you're an ambassador and not like a paid influencer, you're not bound to a contract or anything. So you can literally just take that massive discount code. Yeah. And just product. use that code. Mm-hmm. Wow. So fuck me, I kill core power yoga free week. Depop price inflation or ambassador programs, what would you do? Okay, I think definitely kill the Depop price inflation because that's the only one that, like, hurts other people. <laughs> like, no one deserves to be wearing those clothes that they paid that much for, mm-hmm. you know, versus, like, you're skimming, like, you're skimming other Depop customers, which is, like, Depop is about love and trust and good vibes, and that's, like, totally against the spirit of Depop. Like Depop is about like sending stickers with your order and being like, thank yes. you so much, like sweetie. Like I know you're going to look so cute in this. Tag me uh-huh. in the photos. <laughs> my sister, I left my like contacts at home when I moved to LA and I was running low. So I had to have my sister like send me a box with my extra contacts and she mailed it to me like it was a Depop package and like <laughs> left a note inside and stickers and said like <laughs> review my shop. Whatever. That makes okay, everything so, more fun when you get stuff. Yes, everything should be treated like a depop bag. <laughs> I think I would marry the discount codes and then fuck the core power because like hot yoga. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then yeah, the discount codes like that's a way to live. You can live yeah. that way. Mm-hmm. It's like a way of life. It's a lifestyle. Yeah, I feel like you were you were on that grind 
early too with the like meal um service meal prep services. oh yeah yeah so, like that was another way of those um, are like pyramid schemes almost because yeah. like everyone gets discount codes and they just keep telling more and more people and i guess it works i don't know anyone who's paid full price for one of those meal subscription things <laughs> so you can have two olives given to you in a little plastic <laughs> <laughs> But it's like you don't we're like you don't waste like I'm wasting so much food. Yeah, cooking for one or like no. even two. Some no, now. fruits and veggies are just too big. Like a cabbage to go through a whole cabbage. Mm-hmm. I just want a little crunch. <laughs> I want a little crunch on my yeah. taco. I don't want to be responsible for this melon. I know it's so tiny. You just freeze everything and then. Yeah, but I also just like I'm averse to non-fresh food, which is so like annoying. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Miss SoCal. I love to take a, I love to take a leftover and just toss it in the pan and like add a little thing to it and then it's like a new meal. <laughs> I'm getting back into nutritional yeast. I took a pause from it. Mm. Um, it's because it needs to be used in moderation. I think like it's not a parm substitute, but it can be good. Yeah. So what I was using it for before was when I thought I couldn't eat cheese, I was using it to replace cheese, and that yeah. was like kind of painful because it wasn't cheese. It's not cheese. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But now that I know I can eat cheese, I've been adding it to things with cheese, and it only deepens that flavor. Yes. So 100%. that's that's a really nice thing that I've learned, and I that's forgot. beautiful. Like I've been putting it in pasta sauces, and they just taste so like rich. So oh, yeah, because it's so umami. Wow. Yeah. I think some of the best combos are like vegan like substitute items with their real item or like with yes. a real item. It's wild. Like I've been eating this vegan cream cheese that's like cashew cream cheese. Sorry to mm-hmm. say that word. <laughs> I've actually I'm haven't gonna... told you about it because I don't like I've told everyone else about it and I didn't send you my text and Snapchat so, about it. <laughs> um, for the, all the listeners, I'm allergic to most nuts and cashews are mm-hmm. the gross. That's the grossest word and the grossest nut to me of all time. I can't look at one. <laughs> I can't hear the word. So um, I'll be bleeping it out. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can just DM me and I'll tell you what nut it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I haven't told you about it, but it's been life changing the last two weeks. I've been on it and it's this like herb chive blank cream cheese. And like, I'm from New Jersey. Like I am a bagel cream cheese, like snob. And this shit like blows my mind. It's so good. And I've been putting it on toast with a scrambled egg, mm. totally unvegan, but it's like the most perfect yeah. combo. Yeah. I like to make a pizza with like the Violife brand feta cheese, put that with like real mozzarella. Cause I find the Violife feta to be like, I they have like, good textures and stuff yeah. sometimes. And like, I think it also, it's like more, it's less of like a, a strong flavor than real feta so it goes yeah. it pairs better with other cheeses so gotta it's i'm a real omnivore seriously <laughs> that's the way though like that's just like once you open your eyes and see like <laughs> yeah we're all the best combos on. no because i think a lot of people are really averse to eating things that are marketed as like vegan or vegetarian and it's like open your mind because you don't have to do be vegan or whatever to like enjoy their products it's it's i feel like we're actually in a moment of societal change where like being vegan or vegetarian is no longer becoming so like black and white you are or you aren't mm-hmm. just like bisexuality there's a spectrum there is a spectrum we're um. both like on that veggie <laughs> spectrum <laughs> i'm not gonna go around claiming veganism like <laughs> <laughs> um everyone that is well and i know always this is our life <laughs> assumes that we're vegetarian or vegan upon meeting us or just even knowing us after knowing us for a long time when we're not so we just mysteriously give off those vibes i don't know i think like i used to think that that assumption was like a little bit racist because a lot of brown people are vegetarian. Oh, you're an Indian, yeah. but then it's you get assumed it too so maybe it's not just that I think it's, I, I, I ask people, why did they say that? They say like, <laughs> multiple times people have said it's because of the silver rings that I wear. <laughs> <laughs> which is an amazing stereotype <laughs> maybe it's my nose ring so i think i was gonna say it might be your nose ring i think having long wavy slash curly hair gives people that vibe yeah <laughs> yeah i do have vegan hair diva curl <laughs> oh diva curl diva curl was the first torch just jk canceled <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Diva Curl is majorly canceled. Diva Curl, yeah. If anyone listening to this is still using Diva Curl, free yourself now. Um, DM me and I will give you alternatives because you don't, that is bad. Diva Curl you deserve bad. better. My hair literally grew four inches in like two months after I quit Diva Curl. It was just like, it was like, thank you for freeing me. <laughs> it was like, why were you putting me to this? Yeah. We need to like set Reddit on Diva Curl the same way they got set on GameStop, but like in a negative way. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, we need to unleash like the power yeah. of something like Reddit. The hair salon that my mom goes to released an Instagram statement being like, we still support <laughs> Diva Curl. And I was like, you are canceled. I was like, that's your Are so they also pick- like all lives matter or do they just like I was like, that's so pick me of you. Like that's extreme pick me behavior. Wild. I was like, women have lost their hair. Fuck. There's like hair loss, there's like skin problems, and you continue to support this brand because they're paying you a little bit of money to push their products. <laughs> Dude, it's the mob. <laughs> it's literally <laughs> for this fuck Mary Kale, I would also kill Depop price inflation <laughs> because it's the only one that is not scamming a corporation. Exactly. That's, um, it's individuals. Yeah, and I think that those people are evil and bad people. They're like the people who bullied me in in school. Like they're annoying. Those are the people who like bu- who like made fun of me for wearing Target clothes in two thousand eight and are now selling Target clothes in two thousand eight yeah. uh, for fifty dollars. Yeah. So I don't I don't like it. Um, Depop kind of scares me to be honest I haven't like fully been able to it is to... a lot I know my place I'm just a buyer on Depop <laughs> I'm not, yeah. I don't have like the time to invest mm-hmm. to like be on the selling side and be serious about it I've sold a couple things just like here and there like I'm not a seller same just one it. off exactly yeah in the times I have sold things I don't know if this is just me or if this is like universal but it's such hard work to like package and ship something for like uh, it makes me want to charge Forty dollars for shipping uh-huh. for my time and the energy that it takes to go to a post office. So that is like the highest threshold in the world because a post office, like respect to the USPS, like I am very happy we have them. It's because they're overworked that it is like this, but it is literally like the DMV in there. Yes. Like, it yes. Is- awful like negative there's always mad at you there's so like, you don't have the right thing like you never have the right thing and it's like you tried so hard you package it at home and then you get there and you're like oh fuck like i didn't uh-huh. take this shit thing on like there's always something the post office and the dmv are like in the same ring of hell oh absolutely you know? it, it just like post office is like mini dmv like it's dmv on a small small scale mm-hmm. because like you can sometimes just run in and out and it yeah. can be faster but yeah. it's like it is still ultimately the energy of a D- and the atmosphere of a DMV. I think also like since that takes so much work and what you're getting out of it is like a little bit of money each time, like a little bit of upsell. I think it's a lot of work for like not a good enough reward and also you're, you're hurting customers. So like there's yeah, just so many totally. things wrong with being a Depop girly like in that way um, to me. So I would kill it. And then I think I would marry the core power yoga free week scam because um, I think in the future, we're going to get to a point where, you know, we are able to work remotely more and, you know, we're just going to be a little bit more of digital nomads. And I think (laughs) having a core power, I would be able to like scam a core power free week anywhere anywhere I go. Yeah. And um, that would just be nice because like, I don't want to like, like if I'm going everywhere, like I don't, I don't, I don't want to go to like the gym and all these. Yeah. You never, you'll just never have to pay then. Yeah. I'm just free regrets forever um that probably won't happen but you know it's 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 a good scam it's you know it get you get something good i think the ambassador programs it's also like those companies are usually not the kind of things where like you need those items they're like yeah they're trinkets yeah they're like fun little jewelry or like yeah uh, a hair a lip balm thing (laughs) yeah makeup like whatever but that's not the kind of like yeah it's not like sustainable to me so i would fuck that um it's just kind of like a fun (laughs) little they're like fun little like uh, little dalliances you know Mm -hmm. i feel like core power yoga free week and i could like that's a relationship Mm -hmm. (laughs) we could be in like in love and um (laughs) travel the world together and we'd stay healthy we'd stay active um i had another like funny little tiny fuck mary kill Three big trends from the early to mid 2010s, which <laughs> was American apparel tennis skirts, frequently found on Depop actually, Tumblr as a cool concept, and then Skins UK, the show. Oh, oh, Skins is so. I was literally just thinking about. I'm actually like about to dive into a rewatch of the early seasons of Skins if you want to dive back in. With yeah. Me. Like in the next few days. Mm-hmm. I would totally be down. Uh, I would say definitely. 
fuck skins uk that's terrifying to marry but that's like amazing to fuck and then everything um, i learned about sex and drugs i think was from skins uk yes like real life like hardcore yeah. not just like you concepts. feel it like this was yeah. before euphoria this is I like felt, mm-hmm. skins you had not so seen euphoria this shit on tv run literally yeah and yeah no and i i felt like i was like dude they did like i don't know if it was they did like shrooms or something they did shrooms yeah. and i was like i'm tripping with them i was like whoa <laughs> i'm doing i was like my mom can't no <laughs> <laughs> literally sitting in my bedroom (laughs) actually my house has such bad wi-fi because it's like an old house that if i was trying to watch something when i was like that age i would have to watch it in my closet (laughs) so that's not even that's not even true i wouldn't even have been in my bed i literally would have been sitting in in my closet (laughs) okay so what do we have tennis skirt tumbler tumbler okay so fuck skins then i would say mary tumbler they've got the range whatever i want on that day they're gonna have like if i just want to chill and look at like pretty art they're gonna have it they want to like give me like therapy like teach me about what's going on in the world film theory whatever and then kill the tennis skirt which i actually never owned so i feel fine killing that i would also fuck skins uk because yeah it was sexy you how do you not there were a lot of like, there were a lot of like sex icons that just kind of like came out of, of Skins UK. <laughs> Michelle? Dev Patel? Effie? Was, uh, <laughs> Effie, yeah. Effie was hot. There, yeah, there were sexy people in that show, and there was like. It's crazy that Effie was like 14. Or, I know. Like, I wanted to be insane. her. I was like, same. <laughs> like, more than anything. And she was so troubled. <laughs> she, was, she didn't talk. She was silent. She literally did not speak. But that's how powerful that's how powerful her energy was that millions of girls <laughs> wanted to be her. I watched it and I was like, I'm gonna smear eyeliner all over my face. I'm gonna rip my tights. Rip my tights. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So yeah. I'd okay, so it. definitely fuck them. But I would do something different than you. I would marry the American Apparel tennis skirt. I do have one. I think that it will never go out of style in a sort of like, it will always be the American Apparel tennis skirt. Yeah. But I think there will always be some way to use it in some fun way. You know, like it's a costume piece. Um, You can kind of like, kind of like uh, edge it up with like wearing something, you know, not that doesn't match the tennis skirt vibe with it. I've seen like some people wear like big sweaters over their, those skirts. Yeah. I think they're cute. And so I would marry the tennis skirts. I would kill Tumblr now. I would not have killed Tumblr oh, yeah. in the mid 2010s at all. Like I, Tumblr, Tumblr gave me everything. Tumblr, yes. um, you know, I found myself. Tumblr walked. Tumblr walked so we could run. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would not be anything that you see before you got Tumblr. But now I think the kids who are still remaining on Tumblr, it's toxic. Yeah. It's bad. Um, yeah. Like the 14 year olds who get into Twitter fights with me, like they're all like to avid Tumblr users. And they're like, don't, don't, like if you mention my age in an argument, like I'm blocking you. And they like think <laughs> they're the smartest people in the world. And I'm like, oh my God, like you, you just 14 year olds like sitting on that site being annoying now because I think all the adults like left when they removed porn. Yeah. From Tumblr. Because that was part of it. Yeah, it was like it was like that was sprinkled in. Like mm-hmm. I just said, you could be scrolling and you're like, you know, tattoo of a rose, like artsy black and white shot, whatever. And then it would be like just like a breast. Yeah. Like, just like, There'd be like gifs of people humping. Yes, and, like, <laughs> like like kind of like um those like gifs or, like little videos in like slow mo or mm-hmm. something of like a little motion, like just like stroking. <laughs> 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 yeah no it was like skins and that was a good little surprise skins and tumblr for me like happened at the same time and yeah. um it's like i gained a lot from those things good and bad but i think today's youth need to get off tumblr like get away it's not it's it's over um but i when i started going on tiktok at the beginning of quarantine that felt to me a lot like being on tumblr at that age like just something yeah. about it like and i liked it for a while and then i was like i'm uncomfortable and i had to leave but yeah no i was literally gonna say i think it had some of the energy of tiktok before tiktok had it where it's like you just there's just a million subcultures that are like all 
like you see them more than you do on like other social media yeah. you only see your thing like if I mostly follow comedians on Twitter like I will occasionally see other stuff but like mostly I will just yeah me versus like TikTok and Tumblr it's like you don't have Anything. that much control like it's just gonna give you whatever my TikTok algorithm is like a little bit of politics a little bit of like queer culture a little bit of like makeup a little bit of like arts and crafts and then there's like people polishing stones yes, like videos exactly. of people um <laughs> polishing stones and like carving things out of them and like just incredible stone work i don't know how i got there oh that my phone's amazing my favorite tiktok account i haven't been on tiktok in a while but it's like called like dudes who cook or something like that and it's these men who live in like the forest and make all their food <laughs> over fire like they just cook it all over whoa fire. and it's extreme asmr like it's like chopping whoa. fire crackly um something that i i didn't expect to miss but really do miss now that i can't eat gluten anymore is oreos oh like interesting. i i never thought i would miss them but like the other day i was like oh also because lady gaga has the chromatica oreo oh yeah I, I want them but i can't eat them mm. i I feel like they would be able to make a good GF supplement. Like, uh, I version. think they do have them, but I don't think they're like sold everywhere. Wow. I'm so. I, I would miss them. I'm so glad to have digestive issues and um, eating things in the in 2021 you know like i'm so glad i'm not in the 1950s with oh these problems. oh my god yeah that's what my mom always used to tell me because i have terrible eyesight i'm like minus eight and a half in both eyes and she used to be like aren't you just so glad that you were born now because like if you were born in like the middle ages like you would have just been left to die like you would have been so, people would have just thought you were so dumb because you couldn't see anything and you would have just been left to die <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that's like a rabbit hole where it's like life was a million times worse in every way for everyone then, so. I read somewhere that like the humans are only evolved to know 40 people. Like our our brains like, are only capable yeah. of like really under- knowing 40 people and like none of us know 40 people or less now. Like, yeah. Dude, no, I learned that in the social neuroscience class that I took that was so mm-hmm. fake, but that was the kind of thing that they talked about was like, you know, human, like your brain is most evolved to like know this many people and it's kind of in like a pyramid or like Mm -hmm. circles where like you know you have your like three that are on one level that's like maybe your like partner and your sibling and your parents or something like that and then like you have a little circle outside of that of your close friends and then like a circle outside of that of still like pretty close people yeah and like our homework would be like write down who is in each of your circles like this feels like really upsetting like I don't know there's something like also all of our homeworks in that class we just emailed them directly to the professor like in the body of an email which would also make it feel so like (laughs) this time when your therapist gives you email (laughs) yeah yeah like a self-prompt worksheet yeah like exactly just like kind of self-reflect like not even the TAs will see her (laughs) (laughs) that's so funny just like to her personal email yeah Let's play a game of Would You Rather? So would you rather have all the celebrity gossip, you know, everything about everyone because you run a site like, how do you say it? Du, du moi? Du moi? I was actually thinking about it. I think it's du moi. Du moi or TMZ or would you rather be like a celebrity yourself? Okay. Would I rather run the site or be the celebrity? Yeah. Like have all the info oh. or be the celebrity? No, be the celebrity. I think it's like a miserable life, like running those gossip websites. <laughs> like when I see those, <laughs> the fact that the person who runs Dumont knows who all of those celebrities are, like you are sick in the head. You are literally, I feel so bad for you. We just said the human brain is only evolved to know 30 people. <laughs> they have to know who fucking like every, you know, list like person who's on one disney plus show like oh. i was going through their instagram stories today and i was like who are these people oh my god I, did you see that shailene woodley married that football player? yes does not know yes. it doesn't make sense in my brain because she yeah. like went to like standing rock and he's like a football player yeah i would also rather be a celebrity because i think i love to know pop culture i love to look at the snapchat news stories yeah i'm angry that tiktok has taken over the snapchat news like i don't like tiktok people yeah yeah 
every day it tries to tell me about what Addison is doing. Like, I want to know more about, like, what's, like, Miley Cyrus and Selena Gomez and mm-hmm. Demi Lovato doing. Like, I want to know about, like, mm-hmm. those. I don't I don't want to know about Charlie D'Amelio, you know? Have you seen that Selena Gomez has a cooking show? It's on HBO Max, I want to say. Who asked for that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't think anyone <laughs> did. I think it's just like the most neutral show I can think of. Like that's a show if I was reading like a fiction book set in our world, that is a show that they would have on in the background. Yeah. The, like the development company that I worked at last summer though would make shows like that. And it's often just like finding a celebrity to latch on to. Yeah. It's not even about like, like a celebrity. A show, yeah. Pitching a show around a totally. celebrity that they know will get viewers. People- They're pulling names out of a hat. They're like celebrity and activity. Yeah. <laughs> Selena Gomez and and she's cooking, cooking. Uh-huh. <laughs> with so, a, and then they didn't pull from another, like the bucket. Next one was just chef because she's literally yeah. just cooking with a chef. Like it's not even interesting. <laughs> there's no like interesting spin on it. Yeah, there's no twist. No, it's literally just like good chefs, like chefs that you would know from like Food Network or like popular chefs, yeah. like cook a meal with her. I guess the joke is like she can't, she's like a bad. Interesting. Yay. Mm-hmm. Um, no, but I think <laughs> like I like knowing pop culture, but I don't want to know everything about. Ev- I like looking at it. If I had to sit there and consume it all, yeah, I would go nuts. Celebrities live in blissful ignorance about everything in the world. Like they don't like Kim Kardashian. Yeah, like everything in a she posts. I'm like, I'm like, how? I honestly like. I think I feel like I have a soft spot for Kim Kardashian every like stupid thing she posts I'm like oh like she's so unaware like I'm just like oh like her life is just (laughs) she's so like miles away from my existence it's not our world yeah yeah it's It's like she lives on another planet like I don't I can't even be mad at her like she's just not not one of us it's just how it is I think they're equally not peaceful lives but I think the people who run those celebrity gossip accounts, that's like a heavy as the head that wears the crown situation. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm glad they're doing that work, but... They probably also, like, have to... Like, people probably get mad at them a lot. Oh, yeah, they probably... People people probably, like, go to such lengths to figure out who they are and, like, you know, how to get them to not publish stuff. I like consuming that stuff, though. I think it's fun to know, but... Yeah, um, I'm I'm glad they're doing their work, but... That's how I found out about Shailene and Aaron Rodgers, but I just, some people I don't, well, I don't care about knowing. I like to be able to choose who I can think yeah. about. Like, if you made me care about, I don't know, like Blake Shelton, that would make me angry. I know. They sometimes have to know random country stars. Like Every time I hear country music, okay, maybe this is going to get me canceled. I don't know. Every time I hear country music, I, like, get scared that, like, I'm going to get hate crimes. Like, I, my, my, uh, <laughs> you're, you're like, fight my fight, fight or flight kicks, kicks in. in. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, no, like, uh, uh, I'm like a queer if woman I, of color, I, like, better hide. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm especially unsettled when there's, like, LA, like, Southern California people who love Yeah, so like, much. you didn't grow up in the, if you grew up in the South, that's totally different. Yeah. I can excuse it if you grew up in the South and your, like, politics and life are not that. Like, yeah. I, I can excuse it. If you grew up here and you, you no or, like, in a, in a near city, like, a, like, coastal city or, like, I guess the Midwest, I can kind of see them in country, but. Um, <laughs> We're going to be canceled for these takes. Yeah, I'm a coastal elite. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, we are really sounding like coastal elite. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, Chicago, mm, I'm going to count that as country. <laughs> <laughs> I love Chicago, but I think it's there's too many white people. Lovingly, in the West. it's country. <laughs> it's like yeah, you know, and it's like there's ex- Chicago is two extremes. Like there's like amazing like straight off the ground like rap and R and B music, and then there's like disgusting white people country. Yep, and it's both like, se- ends of the city. It's designed to be that way, and it's bad. And Chicago's living in the past. That's how it's, Chicago. It's living in the past, and you, it needs to come on and like step up with the times. Is my feeling. <laughs> about it i was thinking recently that i'm glad i'm not there because during the pandemic in the winter because i remember that when i would cry outside my tears would freeze on my yes, face that's the worst part and then you're like in pain from cold <laughs> wet on face <laughs> and you're like, oh, i remember your mom came to visit once and i had wet hair and it was winter and the first thing she said to me was like she like scolded me for having wet hair <laughs> really? like, why are you outside with your wet hair it's freezing <laughs> 
Wow, that's wild because that was like my grandma's like biggest concern. Like my dad's mom, like biggest mm-hmm. concern. You know, it was like you don't go out with your hair wet, like you're gonna get pneumonia. And my mom would always be like, you know, that's ridiculous, whatever. So that's really hypocritical of her that she put that on you. <laughs> she was like, Hi you many- Oh my gosh, your hair is wet. Like, oh no, it's freezing outside. <laughs> I was like, Oh yeah, I know. Like I was then your curls freeze. Like that is a crazy experience when yeah. your hair just freezes in place. Mm-hmm. But then when you get back in, sometimes it's like Sometimes it's, it's good for your hair. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it like when the when the when the cold melts, it's like this beauty. Like I had formed it's really freshly cream. Like it's much better than rain hair. Like rain hair is just frizzy and weird. Like sn- like ice yeah. hair. Ice hair is like pretty. It's chic. Speaking of hair, speaking of hair, a girl recently sprayed her whole head with Gorilla Glue and they can't yes. save her head because it's st- literally stuck to her yes. scalp and deep in there. Oh. Um, would you rather? Ba- like have all your hair like stuck in one way forever or have like part of your face permanently dyed from some sort of like makeup that you put on it i'm assuming they're like equal levels of yeah crazy looking mm-hmm. hair well actually maybe makeup because is this cheating or could you just put more makeup over it i feel like it's like hard to <laughs> that's against the spirit yeah okay yeah. let's assume it, it let's assume it'll shine through any makeup I think hair then, because you can just put a hat on, unless it's like literally a spike <laughs> foot too tall or something. Get like an Abraham Lincoln hat. <laughs> you could get have a specially like shaped hat, like you, a be- a cone beanie. Yes, exactly. If um, that's what you need. I think I would do the makeup, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't put makeup over it, but I think I would try to do makeup that goes in coordination with it. Yeah, embrace. Like it. I could no, do I a think fun little a party approach. face look. Like if I had one cheek that was like bright red, I would do like another that was like pink. And then I would have, like, a blue eye and a green eye and, like, some purple. I would be a colorful painting. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. That's a really positive take on it. Yeah. I I'm sure like, I would take the hair because I can cover it. <laughs> 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 also, I just, I think that um, my hair, I think it would make me, I would think that I, I'm too, like, attached to it as, like, some sort of weird. I know. I feel that too. Yeah. Like when you get a bad haircut, that's like one of the best part of the scenes in Fleabag when she's like, it's not just a haircut. Like, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like she storms into the. That is song. how it feels. Like when you get a bad haircut, like the amount of times I've like cried, like leaving or like just like been so upset for the rest of the day, mm-hmm. the next few days, you know, <laughs> like. Yeah. It like crazy. affects your confidence and like. For real. And just yeah. sitting in the chair when you watch them do it. And it's you're so like, uncomfortable. you're like, oh, my part is like a little <laughs> off. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but I don't want to bother them about it, whatever. Yeah. Or you're, you're just like, oh my God, that sounds like a lot. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a weird, like panopticon thing where like, you're having to watch yourself be put through something and you can't really intervene. But um, no, they always part my hair wrong. And then like, after they wash it, I'm like, oh, I like, like it here. And then they're like, why didn't you like, no, like it can't be like that. And also- Whenever I get my hair, that hair salon that I would go to that um, is pushing Diva Curl on people now, they put so, they put probably like a, a ton of, of hair gel in my hair. And like for two weeks, I would wash my hair and it would still stay in the yeah. because the, so much gel was in it. And I don't, like, I don't want my hair to be like every curl perfect and like be covered in gel. I'd rather like it look like it's like there's a no product more. in it, you know? Yeah. It's also just, it's, it's icky feeling. Like it's, you know what I mean? Like on your, your whole head is carrying it. Yeah. My, your scalp yeah. would really hurt from like your hair being stuck in one place, I think. Can I change my answer? Yeah. Okay. I'm changing my answer. <laughs> I convinced you. I, um, I, it didn't sit right with me. Mm-hmm. I was trying to write this would you rather and I was like what is as bad as that? Like that sounds yeah, really bad. Yeah, that's like bad. pretty bad. Yeah, exactly. They can't even shave her head. Like, they, it's that, yeah, that bad. Oh, and it's gonna, like, just imagine how uncomfortable it's gonna be as it grows out. Cause, like, different pieces are gonna grow out at, like, slightly different rates. Oh, you know yeah, what I mean? and it'll be like, oh. Some of it's stuck. Sorry, that was kind of gruesome. Oh, ah. <laughs> like, that is legit potty horror. Oh, would you rather take a road trip with Ted Cruz or Marjorie Taylor Green? Probably Marjorie. 
I'm like scared of like for my physical safety with Ted Cruz <laughs> versus like Marty Tucker. She's gonna be spewing some crazy shit at me. Mm. But like honestly, she would protect me. You know what I mean? She's not gonna like do anything to yeah. me. Ted like, Cruz would like put his hand on your lower back while you're talking or something. You know? I think I would like have someone on Facetime the entire time with Ted Cruz. Like have them just like watching or like have the phone on like, a monitor. A monitor, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I would pick Ted Cruz because I think I would punch Marjorie Taylor Greene in the face like five minutes into being there. Yeah. Ted Cruz also is definitely the more likely of the two of them to just like shut up. Yeah. Like he's annoying as fuck and his views are bad, but he's, he's less like abrasive. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think, I think if you put on the music that he wanted, he would let you just like do it. And then Marjorie Taylor Greene would insist on like radio spewing her yeah, beliefs like she, you, she wouldn't do she would argue would, yeah. with the radio too and exactly. then she'd like ask you for your take and then she'd like scream at you if you didn't agree with her and exactly. yeah she just terrifies me i think like i honestly do if fear anyone for has my, to go on a road trip with her i honestly do fear for my safety with Marjorie Taylor green because i feel like she would go like i think that like some primal instinct in her would like be awakened if like she got mad at me yeah. and like, she'd just like strangle me in the car yeah no i could see it I can see it. <laughs> She's like self defense. <laughs> yeah. Ted Cruz, I feel more like I don't think that he himself is like as intense as his politics are. Whereas I think Marjorie Taylor Greene is just a crazy She's person. She's as intense, yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. She's a crazy person who like found politics as a way to like express her craziness. Mm-hmm, which is not which what is these people terrifying. Do. These these that she belongs in like an MLM where they market people on Instagram. Like that's what she yes. should be doing. That's the other way it could have gone. Yeah, and that's better for her. Like, it, she would do it yeah. well. She'd bully these women into, like, signing their uh, lives over. Uh, absolutely. Truth or dare. Truth or dare, Isabella? Truth. What's the most embarrassing text uh, in your phone right now? Hmm. <laughs> um right before or right after I was watching the John Hamm videos earlier I was um stalking the wife of this actor on the movie that I worked on who was like mm-hmm. a really low level like actor like yeah. he's not important and I was like going so deep into his wife and then I re- realized that she worked for this company I don't think this is too identifying because <laughs> she works at this company, <laughs> Barnana. Do you remember that? Yes, them? yes. Did you try them? <laughs> yes. These dried banana snacks that, like, no one else I know likes, and they are, like, heavenly to me. Like, they are, like, a delight. And I saw that she worked for Barnana, and I was texting my sister, like, so excited, like, as if this was, like, a celebrity that works <laughs> for, like, Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> my sister said you she must wake up every day proud of what she does <laughs> barnetta they're really good i just feel like they're too expensive for what they are that's fair they're also super i feel like they last me a while because i have one at a time they're super rich i feel like they're like kind of like dates where it's like yeah they're really really good but like i would not want to eat a whole bag in one sitting you know what that just reminded me of bobo's oat bars are they gluten free i think they are I think they are. I think they are too. I just haven't had one in a long time. Oh, they're that's so like good. that's like a cake. The lemon, the lemon. Yeah, it's like a cake. It's so good. <laughs> Truth or dare? Dare. I dare you to go all the way back in your Instagram mm-hmm. <laughs> and share like the first <laughs> three posts that you posted, like to your story, to your Instagram story. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah. You know, maybe skip around if the first three are, like, too similar. Like, give okay. some diversity and, and no caption or anything. Okay. Just, like, sh- share them to your Instagram. I have a lot of Instagram posts. We're, like, really... <laughs> it's going to take you a while to scroll. Oh, oh, no. Ooh, this awful, like, square Instagram thing, you know? The white borders. Yeah. Okay. I'll share this one first. It's a picture of me and my friend Iman in 2012. Um, my face is wide open. I do this face still. <laughs> And he has, oh, he lo- he's an adult man with a beard now. And he is a baby boy in this picture with braces. I'd post my story. How about this one of me planking in the library of yes. my high school? Yes. Remember when that was a thing? We can do this one as number three. Perfect. It's a picture of me and my brother. He, he's all very happy. <laughs> he was 10 years old in this. 
This is my face in every single photo. I just have my like mouth wide open. By the time that you listen to this, they'll be gone, but I will share them to Twitter so you can you can <laughs> see, what see for yourself what those pictures were as you listen and play along with this little game. Through the dare. Dare. Um, I want you to call one of our friends if you can. Just so <laughs> a mutual friend we have. Put them on speaker and speak Ita- entirely in Italian and then hang up. No. <laughs> <laughs> If you guys, how okay. much do I have to say? Can I just say like two lines? Um, I would encourage it to be the length of a of a elementary school paragraph, so four to five sentences. <gasps> Yams, that's hard. <laughs> Isabella's a polyglot. I... <laughs> Isabella's a polyglot, and she didn't even tell me. So my whole our whole life, I thought not my whole life. I thought she spoke Italian and English, and then I found out she also knows French. She knows some Spanish. Now she knows some Greek. Oh my god, I know like two words in Greek. <laughs> <laughs> and those words, Delta Gamma. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, because everyone's on the East Coast. Yeah. That's my issue. What about Joe Donahue? Oh yeah, perfect, he'll be up. Am I allowed to tell him after that this is the podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but tell me if you oh. can hear. Three. Yeah. Hello. Ciao, Joe. <laughs> How are you? Come on, Stai. What? Okay, allora ti parlo dopo. Ciao! <laughs> I felt too bad. <laughs> Poor Joe, he's probably like Isabella is in trouble. <laughs> he just texted me. Was that English? <laughs> okay, truth or dare yams? <sighs> truth. Okay, um, what was your most recent on like Twitter, this can be on like Twitter or the podcast or whatever, any platform. What was your most recent like white lie to make something like postable? You know what I mean? Oh, I do this all the time. So let's see. Yeah, that's what I'm okay. saying. Your most recent. Um, I don't even remember what I talked about on the podcast. You know what I mean? Like my brain, my memory is so short. A lot of these things aren't about me. Okay, I said. At least people on this app is on Twitter. At least people on this app bully me about things that make sense. On TikTok, I got death threats for having a side part. No one sent me yeah. death threats for having a side <laughs> part. That's not true. Well, then you can't joke about it. No, but they were, they were very mean to me. People were bullying you about it. It was definitely bullying, for sure. Yeah. For sure it was bullying. Um, they, like, were insinuating bad things about my moral character because I had I a side part. I think that's basically sending you death threats, so I think that's fine. Um, um, truth or dare? Truth. Um, what's the ugliest outfit that I've ever worn to you? <laughs> Shut up, Yams. I basically had this same question on my own. <laughs> um, what's the ugliest outfit that you've worn that I've seen? Yeah. Or like piece of clothing. Hmm. Let me think. So you were like, I don't know about that, but I'll let her do her thing. <laughs> I haven't, like, I'm trying to think. I feel like I haven't really felt that way about anything you've worn. I'm not just saying that to be, like, flattering. I think maybe you have, like, a floral, like, not have now, but, like, you once had, like, a floral dress that I didn't vibe with. Yeah, I have a few, so I'll describe them to you. I had a few. I'll describe them to you. I had so many floral dresses, and at one point I was like, I got it. Like, this is, we got to cut it off, like, I think I don't like, like, the floral dress, like, Doc Martin. That combo. combo. Okay, yeah. That and was you like, definitely do participate in that combo. That was, <laughs> that was like all of high school, of, of the first two years of college for me. So yeah, yeah, that was really like, it was like, she's like, that was what I wore every day. <laughs> like girly on top, murderer on the bottom. Like that's kind of what, yeah. um, that's kind of what my style was for a bit. But okay, there were, I had two main floral dresses, I think. So I'm curious to know if it's one of these two. There was yeah. one that was like, um, it was like spaghetti strap tank top. It was black and like then it went it was like tight at the top and then went out went out and it was had yeah. yellow sunflowers. And there's another one that was like long sleeve and black and it had It was a sunflower. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't like hate it, you know, it was just like I don't really vibe with that outfit. hmm Do you wanna yeah. do that dare as your dare? I mean that truth as your truth. <laughs> sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll boom, I'll Uno, like, reverse card. Okay. Boomerang that back to you. Let's think. I'm trying. I definitely have some things that I look back and I'm like, that was horrible. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at your Instagram and see if it can jog my memory a little bit. Because, like, I, 
right now I'm only rem- I'm remembering I'm having more, like you know the, you know the nostalgia thing where like you remember the good stuff mm-hmm. better like, I know that's, that's what it was hard for me to think of it for you because I more log your many outfits that I like than mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the one outfit you wore three years ago <laughs> that I didn't love <laughs> Uh, oh I have one on my Instagram that I do not like and I, you would be very correct in bringing it up oh I have one I have one it's a dress and I think it's from Reformation that's like polka dots and it's like black with polka Maybe? dots on it yeah or, or pretty dark it's pretty dark it's like yeah. a spaghetti strap dress yeah yes yes that's I, very valid I'm just averse to large polka dots oh does it trigger your whole no 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 no. it doesn't trigger my whole thing I just think I just like don't really like it that but pattern yeah I like small polka dots and you had tights that had small polka dots and I really liked those yeah that's fair what so, was the one that you were thinking that you hated on your Instagram this like jean jacket I had that was like yeah. fitted like freshman year freshman year I remember that and you wore like, it to the point yes, that day nasty yes and there's a photo from it and it's literally just like nasty I had one of those too and I regret it. it's 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 not right jean jackets like, are not that's meant not to comfortable like, that. like mm-hmm. you need it oversized and like worn in so it's actually kind of comfortable like yeah. when it's like tight it's like why are you wearing jeans on your arms yes. why are you wearing skinny like why are you wearing skinny, skinny jeans, jeans on your arms the only jeans that you should be wearing are like mom jeans in yeah your comfort yeah it's i think that's just like a trend that existed and it's gone now type thanks of thing. I, I forgive you for it too yeah the other ones i take re- responsibility <laughs> <laughs> um truth or dare truth um what's the craziest thing you've witnessed on public transportation hmm I mean, I saw someone rolling a blunt across the, like, st- seats for me on the train in Chicago. Um, then he asked if I wanted some. <laughs> I feel <laughs> like I that's... Looking. I feel like that's I don't pretty think tame. that's that crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've seen someone, like, jerking off. Mm. Also not exciting. Classic. I mean, I've seen some, like, fights on NJ Transit. Like, I've seen some drama on NJ Transit. That's probably a little crazy. The maddest I've ever seen you was on NJ Transit. <laughs> like, you were so angry. <laughs> because that's another of those spaces, like the DMV and the post. <laughs> it's like being on NJ Transit, you're on NJ Transit time. Like, you're in their <laughs> space, you know. Yeah. You have to listen to their announcements. Yeah. Truth or dare? Um, Dare. Can you, I dare you to message, however, I don't know, like over Twitter, Instagram, text, whatever, like the hottest person that you've been in class with, like that person that you've been looking at in class, you know, that they're just like hot, like a class crush, which is hard because we didn't go to a hot school. So yeah, oh, we went to one of the least dateable schools in the country <laughs> that actually might be too hard do you need me to change it i i didn't have like good options like i feel like i picked the best options for yes, what the I best had. Available. like, like I, you're renting a car and you're like just give me the best available mm-hmm. like, <laughs> i feel like from you chicago i had like a very fine selection of people yes. to with. like you know no five percent yeah i'm trying to think if i ever had a class crush i had a class crush like do you want <laughs> I then hooked up with my class crush, so I feel like that's no longer, um... Yeah, I want someone that, like, you never, nothing ever happened, you know? But I'm, I don't know if I have any of these, so this might have just been unfair to yeah. ask. I have had one class crush, but I'm forgetting her name. Like, I truly don't remember her Should name Should we adjust all. maybe just the coolest person you've been in class with? Like, that kind of person, you know, where you're, like, wow, yeah, you're so cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. From class. And yeah. then just, just shoot them a message that's just, like, hey, what are you up to these days? And then... Mm-hmm. Maybe a bit emoji. Okay. It's not too much to ask. Yeah, yeah, no, no. That's, that's fine. I'm going to pick Fakayo. Curious who you're selecting. I think okay. Fakayo. Um, who I think that we're like acquaintances, but I my last messages to her were from, so what should I say? Just like, hey, what have you been up to? And then a bit emoji. What are you up to these days? Um, something that I really hate is... The the lack of hair options in making me for emojis. curly haired people. You there it's is either only one option. Like they're stick like, straight or like four C like kinky yeah. girls. I am neither. There's no texture otherwise, mm-hmm. and there's not the right length of every style too. Yeah, like 
there's some like textures of hair or only in certain lengths. There's one curly that I think would come close to all my hairs, but it's only in a bob. So The Sims was allowing you to like customize a person Everything. to like insane Everything. insane accuracy like 10, 10 plus years ago. So why can't Apple's emoji figure it out? We simmed out um, everyone on my study abroad, like my yeah. friend group just like made a big Sims game of all the other people on our study abroad. <laughs> <laughs> and like made them go through the simulation <laughs> and that was also like accurate like people got it accurate but then also like it kind of like was funny to see which people it, it put into relationships and like started woohooing just <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <was> random people <laughs> oh, no. I think that if I am a sim and I'm being controlled by a player they are not attending to my needs like they are the world has like forgotten our sims game like we're all in a sims game yeah. <laughs> I'm like the player just like I'll, stop. I'll like lie in bed and I'll need to pee for like an hour before I like get up and go. <laughs> like, it's like you. Should, that's like, what the Sims that. feel. Yes. Yes. Like, that's should. actually like the saddest one when the Sims have to pee. Like for to, for me, that is the one that breaks my heart. Their like when they're hungry, like, I'm just like, shut up. You're just yeah. like a Tamagotchi, you know? Like I don't care. Yeah. But they tell you they have to pee. Like you are a cold hearted bitch if you don't feel something. Uh huh. Thanks so much for joining me today. This is such, oh, such fun. Such an honor. I worry that when I go to edit it, it's just like us talking over each other the whole time, but, um, hopefully not. I think we took turns. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think so too. I just, you know, our real life friends have given us the feedback that um, yeah, we have received that feedback. We don't leave room for others <laughs> to speak in. <laughs> so famously, some people have said, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that it's a challenge and if you're not down for the challenge, then, you know, get out of the game. You're missing out. Yeah, exactly. You're missing out on a world of benefits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so thanks so much oh such an honor thanks so much for joining our pillow fight see you next time <laughs> pillow fight is a production by me Yamini Nambimadam with music by Greer Baxter. Thanks for listening.